Hey traders, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I want to answer a question from a student in the Pinescript Mastery course. And in doing so, we're going to build out a strategy idea that's a little bit interesting. It's not something I'd personally trade in its raw form, but it has potential to be turned into a system with a bit of creativity, adding some filters, adding some better risk management, that sort of thing. So this is just pure food for thought while answering a practical question from a student. So the question is, I'm trying to get the exact price on the corresponding chart Y axis when a moving average crosses over another moving average. The crossover can trigger at any time within the bars time frame, but I'm working on closed bars. There doesn't seem to be a crossover price option in PineScript, it's just a Boolean true false result. What the student has been doing is averaging the two moving average prices when TA cross occurs. However, it's not as accurate as they would like because the two moving averages don't necessarily cross when the bar closes. Um, as an FYI, I want to use the crossover price as a starting level when looking for higher highs and lows or lower lows and highs. Thanks in advance. So uh, the script I have here is one that I built out after I coded an example of how to get the crossover price as just a pure indicator. And then I added some strategy code to turn it into a uh, system, which wasn't part of the question, but I just got carried away because I was curious to see how this uh, concept would work as a trading system. So to start off the video, I'm going to show you how to get the crossover price and draw that onto your chart. And then we'll add strategy functionality to the script to show you guys one, how easy it is to turn anything into a system. And two, just to make the lesson more interesting because otherwise we're just detecting moving average crossovers. And when I make YouTube videos, I like to try and give you guys a little bit more than something that simple. So let's get into the Pine editor and start coding. Okay, so the first thing we need to do when detecting a moving average crossover is obviously get the moving averages. Now you don't need to do this, but I'm going to make these um, user inputs. So I'll just copy the code over to save time. We're just getting two user inputs here for each moving average. And after we have these inputs, we need to get the MA values themselves. So that's really easy. We just use the ta.ema function, pass in a price source and a length. So now that we have our moving averages, we should probably draw them onto the chart so that we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to use a couple of plot functions here to draw these MAs. There they are. I can get rid of this closing price plot now. And there we go. So what we want to do is detect when the crossover happens and figure out what the closing price of that crossover bar was. So there are two ways we can do this. We can do it the easy way or the hard way. So I'll start with the uh, easy way um, and then I'll show you the more complicated, sophisticated way. So the first thing I need to do is detect when the cross happens. So to do that, I'll just create a new variable here called cross and it'll be set to ta.cross. Now this cross function takes two price sources and when they cross, this function will return true, otherwise it's false. So we wanna see if EMA1 crosses EMA2. And now what we can do just really quickly to see when this cross is detected is we can just change the background color of our chart to green whenever cross is true or NA whenever it's not true. And now we will be getting a big green background whenever a cross occurs. So that's the first step completed. Now, in order to get the price of the crossover, the easiest way to do this is to just simply reference the closing price of the bar whenever the cross occurs. So we can just say here, uh, float, cross price equals, do we have a cross of our EMAs? If so, set cross price to the closing price. Otherwise, if we do not have a cross of our moving averages, set cross price to NA. And then finally, we can draw a label onto our chart to display the cross price. So for this, I just need to check if our cross Boolean is true. If it is, we want to create a new label. So label, uh, I'll just call it cross label equals label dot new. And then this requires two parameters to tell TradingView where to draw the label. The first one is a bar index or bar time. The second one is a price. For now, I'll just set it to the bars high, but we'll change that in a moment. Uh, the final parameter here is the text we want to display. So I can just say here, cross price equals plus. Now you can't add a number directly to a string in TradingView in PineScript. We need to use the str.toString function to convert numbers into text. 
Uh, so here we can pass in our cross price. And if we save our code, we should be getting labels now uh, on the bars high whenever a cross occurs. That label's a bit hard to read, so let's change the color. I'll just change the color to color.white. Um, that'll give it a white background with dark text. It makes it easy to read. Um, I don't like that it draws over price action. What I'd prefer is this label drawing up here on the actual crossover itself. So what I'm going to do here is check for the highest uh, EMA price. So we can check here, is EMA1 greater than EMA2? If so, then the highest EMA is EMA1. Otherwise it is EMA2. And then I can paste this into our Y axis value on our label parameters. Now, when I save my code, these labels will be drawing on the crossover itself on the highest moving average when the crossover occurs. And now we can get rid of our background color because that just clutter, clutters up our chart a bit. And there we go. We are detecting crossovers and we're getting the price value from that crossover or cross under. TA.cross detects both crossovers and cross unders. If you wanted to detect just a crossover, you would use the TA.cross, whoops, crossover function. And that takes the same two parameters. Alternatively, you can use the cross under function. Uh, TA cross will detect either of those conditions. So that's the easiest way to get the closing price or any price value. This could be the high of that bar, the low, whatever, the volume on that bar. Whenever this condition is true, whatever we set cross price to will be corresponding to the bar that caused the MA to uh, officially cross. An alternative way to get the cross price in PineScript would be to use the value when function. So I'll show you what that looks like. This is a little bit more complicated, but gives us a little bit more flexibility with the values we are getting. Now I'll show you what I mean. To use this function, it's in the TA library. So ta.value when, and if I control click on this function, here's an example, and it's doing exactly what this student wanted to do. It's getting the value of the closing price on the second most recent cross. So what we need to pass in here is the Boolean condition we want to trigger this function. So in this case, that would be our cross Boolean. The next thing we need is a price source. So in this case, we want to get the closing price. And then finally, we have to tell it which occurrence to reference. So if I set this to zero and save my code, uh, we'll get exactly the same price values drawing onto our chart. However, if I set this value to one, then the value when function is going to treat this number like a historical operator for the values that occur whenever this condition is true. So in other words, if I set this to one, this label will now be referencing the previous crossover because remember in coding, we start counting from zero. So one would be the second last occurrence of our crossover or cross under. So now if I save my code, this label will say 287.11, 287.11. It's now referencing the previous crossover. And if I wanted to reference the one before that, this one here, 265, I would put two in here. And now we're referencing one, two, three crosses ago. So for now, I'm going to comment out this line of code and we'll stick with the simpler version of this method since we don't need to reference previous crosses. We just need to reference the current one that just occurred. So, so far the script is pretty simple. We're not really doing anything particularly useful with this script. We're just getting the price value of the cross. Obviously that is useful in some uh, circumstances, but to wrap up this lesson, I'm going to add some complexity to this script. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the closing price of our crossover is the highest close over the past 10 bars. If that's true, then we're going to flag this bar as important. And what this will achieve as a side effect is whenever the moving average is um, crossing over multiple times during consolidation, we won't be highlighting those bars because during consolidation, obviously the cross bars close is not going to be the highest or lowest close over the past 10 bars because we're in consolidation. So that can be useful to filter out some noise when dealing with a moving average cross system. So let's code that out now. First, let's check if the crossover price is the highest price over the past 10 bars, or in this case, the highest close. There's multiple ways we can do this. The way I'm going to choose to do it today is this way. I'm going to declare a new Boolean value called highest price. And this is going to be set to cross. 
So whenever we have a crossover or cross under, highest price is going to be set to true. But then what I'm going to do is loop from uh, the previous bar right before the cross back to 10 bars ago. And on each iteration of this loop, we are going to check if the cross price is less than or equal to the close on this loop uh, for loop bar. If that condition is met, then we are going to set highest price to false and break out of the loop. And then what I'll do here is I will flag the bar if it is a high or low close. And to do that, I'll just use the background color function. It's the simplest way I know of to highlight a bar. The plot shape function works as well, but I like this method, especially when I'm developing a script. Maybe once I'm finished with the script, I'll add a nicer looking way to flag bars and market conditions, but for now this will do. So I'll set it to color.new, color.green with 50% transparency. And otherwise, if highest price is not true, then we want to set the background color to nothing, just the default color. So now when I save my code, we should be getting some green bars on our chart. There we have it, and that's working perfectly. So now we are only drawing the background color green when this bar is the highest close over the past 10 bars. Now the reason we had to start our for loop from one instead of zero, which you would typically do, is because if we check if the cross price, the closing price of our crossover is less than or equal to the closing price of the original cross bar, we're comparing the closing price to the closing price and this will return false. So we need to start counting from the bar before our crossover and we count back 10 bars from there and compare the closing price to each bar over that loop. So now I can uh, pretty much copy this um, block of code here, but just flip everything around so that we're checking if the crossover bar or cross under bar is the lowest closing bar over the past 10 bars. And I can paint the background color red when that occurs. And now we are ignoring any crosses that occur in consolidation essentially. And that will give us slightly better quality um, crosses to work with, especially if we're going to turn this script into a system, which is what I'm going to do next. So the code here is pretty simple and self-explanatory. The for loop's obviously a little bit more complex if you're new to PineScript, but everything else is pretty standard, simple stuff. What I'm going to do now is copy over the source code to the strategy version of the script, and I'll just explain the changes I made to this original code base. So here's the strategy script. Now the first part of the script is identical, other than the fact we've changed the script to a strategy script and we've set the default quantity type to a percentage of equity and the default quantity value to 100. So this means we'll be investing 100% of our account balance on each trade by default, but we can obviously change that in the properties of the script settings. Then we're getting our MAs, drawing them to the chart. And then here I've expanded our crossover detection code just slightly. So now I'm differentiating between crossovers and cross unders. This is so we can go long and short. Uh, we wanna be going long when the shorter term EMA crosses over the longer term EMA. And we wanna be going short when the shorter term EMA crosses under the longer term EMA. So I need to differentiate between those two. We still have our cross Boolean here, and this is going to be true if either of these conditions are met. Then we get our cross price, just like before. Then we check if the crossover price, the closing price of the crossover or cross under bar is the highest or lowest closing price over the past 10 bars. And then we're flagging when the bar is the highest closing bar over the past 10 bars during a crossover condition or cross under condition. And here's the biggest difference in the code compared to the last script. So here we're checking if we have a cross condition, then we're drawing our label like we were in the previous script, but then we're checking if highest price is true and our strategy position size, the back tester position size is flat equal to zero, then we enter a long position. Or alternatively, if we're flat and the current bar is the lowest closing priced bar over the past 10 bars, after a cross has occurred, then we enter short. And now these should really say uh, cross over and cross under. And so if we get a cross or cross under, and this code gets executed, we go long if we're flat and the current bar is the highest close over the past 10 bars after a cross. And highest price will only be true 
if we've had a crossover and that bar is the highest close over the past 10 bars and then the opposite for short trades. And then finally, we just exit our trade if the current bar's closing price is less than our short-term EMA. So here we get our crossover. The short-term EMA crosses over the long-term EMA. The bar that caused that crossover is the highest close over the past 10 bars. We enter long and then we hold our position until price closes below our short-term EMA. Then we exit on the next bars open. Uh, we're investing 100% of our account balance on each trade and we're on the one hour time frame here. And you can see that this system shows potential. Now this is just one data sample. It's not enough to tell whether or not this system is actually, actually profitable. We've only got 74 trades here. This could be pure luck. And I haven't taken the time to check how robust this system is because it's just, it's not really something I would personally trade. This is all purely just for example purposes to give you guys some food for thought and just demonstrate how you can create a simple base for a system. In this case, using moving average crosses. Now, obviously we could improve this system by adding more filters, by adding better risk management. Um, I think this exit condition is adequate, but there could be better systems out there such as a trailing stop um, or an exit reason. Um, better filters could include things like verifying momentum. So you could use the ADX for that rate of change. You could check the RSI value. If the RSI value is above a certain threshold, then you can consider momentum to be strong. You could check if the current bar's size is greater than the recent ATR value. There's dozens of different techniques you could employ to improve this system. Uh, those are just some examples. Then obviously you can tweak the moving average length. So we could go much shorter if you wanted to. And now we get significantly more trades. We can see how that affects the system. Much more return, but also greater um, drawdown. So there's obviously pros and cons to whatever you do with this sort of approach to a system. Uh, there's different time frames, so we could check how the daily chart performs. Um, now the daily charts only taking nine trades, so that could be an issue. You may need to lower the moving average period for higher time frames so that we get more trades. But anyway, you get the idea. Hopefully this answered the original question for the student who asked it, and hopefully you guys found this interesting um, and some food for thought when developing your own trading systems through the TradingView strategy tester. I'll wrap this up here. The source code as always is below. You can go and play around with this and um, see how you would improve it. If you have any suggestions in the comments section, please let us know. I'm always curious to see what techniques you guys employ in your own trading. But for now, that will do it for this video. Just before we wrap up this video, I just wanna remind you guys that I've started a weekly email newsletter um, that you might find interesting. In this newsletter, each week I share a resource, a technique, a book, a blog post, a podcast, anything that I've found um, to be extremely valuable in my own trading. Uh, I share it on this weekly email newsletter. There's no marketing, it's not a sales thing. It's just a way to share value with you guys and give people a reason to be on a mailing list. Because if you're anything like me, uh, you hate signing up to mailing lists because it's usually just spam or marketing or some annoying thing like that. I'm trying to change that trend by, uh, especially in the trading space, by just providing pure value to you guys. In the latest uh, email newsletter, I gave a list of my favorite Chat with Traders podcast episodes. There's 28 of them here. I've listened to every Chat with Traders podcast ever released, every episode. And this is a compilation of the ones that stood out to me that I got value from. Either I learned a new technique or insight um, from one of these episodes. And so if you're interested in that, go to theartoftrading.com. You can sign up to the mailing list and I'll speak with you there. Get sent out every Wednesday. Otherwise, if you're not interested in that, that's fine. I will speak with you next Friday when I release the next YouTube video. Best of luck with the trading. Take care and I'll speak with you soon.